Hi GHS, we're back again with the third in our series of interviews with members of third party presidential campaigns. Remember that there are 13 nominees for president on the Arkansas ballot and we're bringing interviews with as many of the campaigns as we can so we can learn a little more about the lesser known political parties. According to their website, the Green Party of the United States was formed by several state level Green Parties joining together in the 1990s. The Green Party gained a lot of national attention during the 2000 presidential election when Ralph Nader won 2.7% of the popular vote. This year, Howie Hawkins is the Green Party's presidential nominee. His running mate and nominee for vice president is Angela Walker. I interviewed Ms. Walker last week and she was kind enough to share with us a little about she and Mr. Hawkins' campaign and the Green Party as a whole. So what is the Green Party and how is it different from the Republicans and the Democrats? Well, we are explicitly an eco-socialist party. Um, that's one huge difference right there. Um, and anyone who knows about the Green Party, you know, as our name suggests, we center uh, peace policies and also ecological policies. Those are our very forefront things for us and also um, grassroots democracy and you know there's an emphasis on justice for all people you know like I said our peace policies you know both within the borders of this country and also outside of them you know we are the only party that is talking about nuclear de-escalation de uh, de and also nuclear disarmament. All right so the healthcare industry is a major issue in the United States how does how we propose to make the healthcare system better? Medicare for all, which you know was popularized by by Senator Sanders, that's ours. And you know, for for you know on our platform, the Medicare for all is a community controlled national health service, which means that it is locally accountable to the people that it serves, and that there are no point of point of service costs for anybody. If you need treatment, you go to your nearest clinic and you get it. The end, it's that simple. You know, this is something that is done in other countries as y'all know. Um, and the, the one that comes to my mind immediately is Cuba, you know, where your doctor lives in your neighborhood and, and you know, three o'clock in the morning, something's happening. You can knock on your doctor's door. They come take care of you. No bill, that's as it should be. And, in, and also an emphasis on preventive medicine. And so with Medicare for all, all medically necessary services are covered. All right. So um, another issue in current day politics is climate change. What are your party's views on climate change? Climate change is not something that we have time to be kicking the can down the road with like, oh yeah, 2050. We don't have until 2050. And I think that, you know, with what has happened with the wildfires on the West Coast, with the fact that at, at a few points this summer, the Arctic was 100 degrees, our party and our, our campaign platform is to end fracking, end these practices, end, end uh, dependence on fossil fuels, end dependence on nuclear energy. And, you know, move to solar, move to wind, move to more sustainable sources of energy and, and also move, doing these things in the way that we build buildings. And so that those buildings, you know, the, the materials that we're using are not contributing to, uh, are not outputting carbon into the atmosphere. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty multi-layered, but our, our position as a party and our position on, on as a platform uh, campaign around climate change is that we, we don't have any time left. It is time to reverse climate change now. Yeah, so if elected, uh, what year are you proposing for us to go full green? For us, we are looking at 100% clean energy by 2030. All right, so as a high school student, 
one of my one of our biggest concerns at the high school is education. What are your plans for the Department of Education? We believe that education is also something that needs to be community controlled as far as your local school. And as far as what we would do nationwide is pull our public schools off of local property tax and fund them federally. That way it increases equity across the board, you know, so, so that even if a school is in a neighborhood or in a community that is not particularly affluent, those students still get the same resources that all other students get, which is currently not the thing that's happening. Um, we want to make, you know, as far as public education from pre-K through college, public, edu uh, public education is free. Cause it's something that's close to my heart. Before I left Milwaukee, cause I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the work that I was doing was around promoting the community schools model and saying that the, you know, if you have a school in your neighborhood, that school should, should provide whatever services that community needs. You know, if people need food, if people need, you know, somewhere to come exercise, if they need job training, whatever those folks need, you should be able to come into your school and get it. There should be social workers, there should be, you know, counselors if needed, there should be, you know, services that, you know, people in the community are having substance use issues. They should be able to access those things at the school. Making sure that the infrastructure of all of our schools is taken care of. We've got a lot of problems with um, crumbling schools. You know, a lot of these buildings are old. They have not been kept up. So making sure that all of the, all of the buildings that, that our young people are going to school in are completely, you know, revamped. They're safe. They're clean. They're bright. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Defending our elected school boards and making sure that the state and, you know, cities, mayors can't step in and take over our board. And also making sure that student voices are included in decision making so that, you know, it isn't just a bunch of, you know, the top down thing that we're seeing now where you have all these administrators. Young people should have a voice in how their schools work. All right. So COVID-19 is a global pandemic. How will how we handle COVID-19 if elected? Well, we would have Medicare for all, uh, as we talked about before, so that if you need treatment, you know, like you and I were talking, um, folks should be able to just go and get it. There should be a national, nationwide test, trace, and isolate program so that if we have folks who have been exposed, that, you know, we can test, you, you can trace folks and find out, you know, where you've been and make, you know, contact, you know, and things like that. And also while we're doing all of this, making sure that people are supported, you know, not just having access to medical care, but also not having to worry about, you know, man, I have to go to work, which is something we saw a whole lot of at the beginning of this pandemic. Like people, you know, yay, frontline workers, but at the same time, you're exposing them to something that could, you know, that's potentially really bad for a whole lot of people. Making sure that people would be receiving an income so that they could shelter in place safely without having to worry about how am I gonna buy food? How am I gonna pay rent? And also providing uh, money to small business owners so that they could stay afloat and still you know, keep their employees and make sure that they, you know, whenever things were safe to open up, they'd still have a business. So protests are happening all over the United States. If elected, what will Howie do to soothe the protests? the fact that most of these movements are led by young people. Y'all get it. And you understand that this country is built on the genocide of indigenous people, the exploitation and continuing discrimination against African-American people, and you know the demonization of immigrants. This is not acceptable. One of those things is, you know, the Black Lives Matter call for defunding the police. 5% of what police respond to is actually the kind of thing that you need police to respond to, violent crime. When you have someone who's having a substance use issue or someone who is having a mental health episode, you don't need to be sending an armed officer to deal with that person. They need a counselor. 
And so when we're talking about defunding the police, we're talking about reducing the size of police budgets. And you'll know that in most very metropolitan areas, that is the lion's share of that budget is, is policing. And so shrinking it to, you know, allocate, reallocate those funds to other services that people actually need. And also going through police forces and rooting out people who are racist, who are misogynist, who are trans and homophobic, who are sadists, making sure these are not the people who are doing this work and that the people who are on these forces are there to actually help and honestly protect and serve. All right. So according to the Pew Research Center, the economy is a top issue for voters in the 2020 election. What is Howie's plan to create a more robust economy for all Americans? For us, it's a socialist economy. And it is, it is, we're real, we're very upfront about that. We're talking about worker cooperatives. We're talking about public ownership of big banks and industries. We're talking about also instituting an economic bill of rights and making sure that all people make a living wage, no matter what work you do, bringing the minimum wage up to $20 an hour, which is entirely doable, making sure that if people are not, you know, in the, in the work that they're doing, if you are not up above poverty, up above the poverty level, the government would give you a check every month to bring you up above the poverty level. Cause some people, you know, everyone, Everyone's capacity to work is not the same. And also, you know, under the Green New Deal is making, you know, ensuring a federal job guarantee that anybody who wants a job should be able to walk into a government office and walk out with a, a clean green job. There's so much infrastructure in this country that needs rebuilding. You know, we're talking about habitats, wetlands. We're talking about, you know, moving to organic farming and, you know, electrified rails and things like that for freight and things. So that's a lot of jobs for a whole lot of people and making sure that there's a federal job guarantee. Like if you go to the private sector and you don't get a job, you know, that, that is doing what you need it to do, you go right into a government office and walk out with a job and, and that something that pays a living wage. And because there'll be Medicare for all, you don't have to worry about benefits because it's already there. All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening to interview with me. <laughs> it is an honor, and, and I'm not just saying that. Thank you for asking me. I really appreciate that.